Okay, so I am in the photop.com program. I'm using my brush tool. I'm using a smoothness of 32, an opacity of 100, a flow of 100. I have it set to be pressure sensitive, but I'm not using a tablet, so that doesn't matter for me. And the size of it is going to be about 10 pixels. And that allows me to make little marks. Hmm. Clicking and dragging. And little stippling, you know, marks. Now, how can we make it look like really considered line art. I'm trying to be inspired kind of by medieval images. Well, first of all, I have the lines all on their own layer, right? These black solid shapes like puddles of ink. So the only pixels I'm putting down are solid black. And by isolating that all in one layer, it means I can also trim away from them just by using my lasso and I can bevel the edges or trim the edges just like they were made with a real brush or a calligraphy pen. Oh, I want to be careful not to have a feather on my selections though because I'm going for really clean line art. Some people like to soften their line art a little bit, but I do not. And you'll see why when we get to coloring. So just lots of tapering. I could use the eraser tool as well, which I could uh, use all the same settings that I use for a pencil to erase or for a brush to erase. But because I know I want it clean, I don't want any softness at all. I like being able to do this with the lasso. And yet again, it's why we spent quite a bit of time in the beginning of the class learning compositing in raster programs so that we feel we have full control of all these pixels. Big and small. Now, why do I use a, at least a 10 pixel brush? That's so when I taper it, it doesn't get too jagged because you have a minimum of 10 pixels across that you're cutting away from. Okay. So, I did those marks so you can see it's not only about keeping what you sketch, only not only about tracing what you sketch, but improving on it, you know, building up on it, thickening the lines where you think they need to be thickened. And I have the other two layers locked. I have my sketch layer locked so I don't accidentally paint line art on that. A little bit of line thickness variation there. And just little touch ups. Now, this is not a logo. You don't need to worry about every line being in the perfect place or being perfectly smooth. And as we're just getting introduced to this project, you don't need to worry about making it perfect. But we do for this assignment want our line art to be something we're pretty happy with. Because once we start coloring behind it, it becomes difficult to change the line art in any dramatic way. If it suits your illustration, it's also helpful to really contain the shapes. So you see how my skull was open there. 
it's helpful to contain it. In fact, I might leave it uncontained so I can, when it comes to coloring, I can show you why. I'm filling in little gaps between the teeth. And I'm drawing some more teeth. And as you do it more and more, as long as your computer is cooperating with you, you'll kind of get into the rhythm of it. It will make more and more sense. I've closed every other program that I don't need running. Of course, I have a screen recorder on and I have Zoom running, so it would be better not to have those as well to help with the processing. But whatever tricks you can do to still keep it at a pretty high resolution, I'm at eight by 10 inches for my overall image or eight by eight inches for my overall image. So eight is the smallest dimension I recommend. at 350 pixels per inch. And it's basically the same as a large file size if we were to search image sizes in Canvas, right? So you want at least 2,000 pixels. And that means it will print reasonably well. But if you're really having slowdown problems, you can change it from print resolution to screen resolution, which is 72 pixels per inch instead of 300. Just going to do a few little textural marks. And then because they are not contained, I'm going to go in and taper some of them. And in terms of an art demo, this is pretty basic. There's not a lot of digital techniques. It's just putting down the lines and then refining them until you're happy with them. And that's the same if we were in Illustrator using the blob brush, right? It's just a lot of refining, kind of figuring out your approach. I'll taper this a little bit. Now, if I had a, a stylus that was that I could set to pressure sensitivity. I could thin each stroke as I draw it, you know, which would be nice. Okay, now the creative part of the inking, where your sketch maybe isn't so clear. You know, so this kind of blob back here of the back jaw behind the sword the back edge of the jaw. I have to decide if I want any black lines there or if I'm going to resolve it all in color. You know, is it all just in shadow? And that's very much what a professional inker does, whether they're doing it digitally or traditionally. They're also adding shading, adding lines, anything they think will be solid black, including areas that they think should be just totally filled in with black. So for instance, if they thought this area should just be solid black, in the final coloring of the printing for this illustration, I'll do this on a separate layer, they would just fill it in. So I'll use the paint bucket tool. 
and just fill that in with solid black. That's called full bleed because you're you're flooding the the printing film work with ink in that one area. So I could full bleed the eyes, the nose, right? Lots of places I could use full bleed. But of course, I can do that in coloring as well. And in coloring, then you can make it maybe not quite a full black. Which might be more interesting. So just slight tapering and customization. Okay, now some other ways we can use this same brush tool. If you want to do straight lines, perfectly straight lines, like I do for the sword, I'll do it on a, an extra layer. What you do is you click and you hold down shift while you move in your one direction. And shift is like a ruler. It will keep it perfectly straight. And I went ahead and did this on a new layer so that I can then erase it where it overlaps my other work. Oops. So if you keep holding down shift, it will connect it with the last mark you made. There we go. But now maybe I don't actually want it to be perfectly, perfectly straight because maybe that's going to look a little too artificial to me. So then my compositing skills come back in. I can lasso it. I can hit Control T, not Command T. And just rotate it so slightly. Give it a bit of a taper. Use my arrow keys to nudge it into place. Hit Return. And then I can do it with the other side. Just tilt it slightly. So, ah, control T, not command T. It looks so much like Photoshop that I tend to use the same shortcuts. But not tilt it too much. All right, so now this is a, a technique I shared with someone before class, but what if you want to thicken your line? So there's a few ways, right? Let me first cut, cut them out the way I want them cut out. So I get an even line weight to everything. Then I'm going to use my brush. Yeah, make the tip. Straight lines are hard to do with the track pad. So that's okay. Not a logo. I don't need to use the shape tools for it. Just like forging the sword itself, I have to get kind of beaten up. It's going to be a little different on each side. I'm going to use my lasso and work that way. And zoom in where I need to. You can also use your arrow keys to move lasso selections around.
can always over ink 